Have you ever done something you've regretted? Have you ever wished you could go back in time and undo a decision you've made? Well, we've all been there, but some of us seem to have a real knack for it. Today, I'm going to give you three easy steps that will help you make a bad decision. Hey there, everyone. My name is Dwayne Bryant. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, just hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click the bell and you'll get a notification every time I post something new. Well, today we're talking about how to make a bad decision. And we're going to look at a theme verse for our episode today, and that's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. People make bad decisions every day. We read news stories of zoo visitors who want to take pictures with jaguars or tigers, and they wind up in the hospital. Other people keep dangerous, exotic pets in their homes, completely unconcerned about the risks that these animals might pose. Hundreds of people have died taking selfies in hazardous conditions. They've been killed by drowning or electrocution or by falling off of a cliff or a building. It almost seems like the human race excels at making terrible choices. So if we want to make a bad decision, how do we do it? Well, first of all, all we have to do is refuse wise counsel. Pay no attention to good advice. King Rehoboam learned this lesson the hard way in 1 Kings chapter 12. After becoming king, his older counselors advised him to ease the tax burden on the people, basically score some political points at the beginning of his reign by doing something that will benefit his subjects. But he rejected this advice and turn to his peers instead. In a moment of unbridled machismo, they tell the king precisely the opposite of their wiser colleagues. Basically, they say, you show them who's boss. Rehoboam does this. He follows their advice and fractures the kingdom in the process. Rehoboam could have prevented this national disaster if he had followed the wise counsel of his more experienced colleagues. The Bible tells us a little bit about decision making. It says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. And then it also says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Proverbs 19, 20. So if we're going to avoid mistakes, we need to actively seek out advice from other people. Secondly, we are going to make bad decisions if we give in to pressure. Here we have to look at Samson in the book of Judges. He was destined for greatness before his birth. Unfortunately, he didn't take his commitments very seriously. He plays around with forbidden women. He violates every single one of his Nazarite restrictions. Delilah repeatedly begs him to reveal the source of his strength, which he does eventually. And after she has Samson's hair cut off, her Philistine comrades capture and blind him. His doom is sealed because he allows Delilah to pressure him into giving up his secret. The best way to avoid giving in to peer pressure like this is to ask two questions. Number one, is this a decision I would make under normal circumstances? And number two, does this decision put me closer to God or take me farther from him? And sometimes these decisions have to be made very quickly in the moment, which means we have to develop the ability to take a step back and look at things dispassionately, even when we're under pressure. Third, we are going to make poor choices if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, and playing with temptation is a way of doing this. Well, that is a recipe for disaster. No one knew this better than David. One day when his army is out in the field and he's home in the palace, he sees Bathsheba bathing. He's inflamed with passion and brings her to the palace for a one-night stand. He later discovers that she's pregnant and tries to cover it up by bringing her husband home from the battlefront so he can spend some intimate time with her. The plan fails, of course, so David panics and he schemes to have Uriah killed in battle. Here we have a terrible series of moral failures that could have been prevented if only David had averted his gaze 
or asked someone to hold him accountable. Overconfidence in our strength and in our ability to withstand temptation can sometimes be our greatest weakness. That's why we've got passages like 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 1 Timothy 6, 11, 2 Timothy 2, 22, all of which talk about fleeing immorality. Paul doesn't say, it's okay to hang around, have faith that God's going to help you resist. He says, run from it. Because if we play with fire, eventually we are going to get burned. Now, there are a lot of other ways to make bad decisions. Cain let his envy and anger get the better of him. Jonah tried to escape responsibility. Eve valued practicality over obedience. And then we've got Peter, who denied Christ in a moment of fear. These examples demonstrate the importance of being thoughtful, reflective people who think before we act. So, how do we make a bad decision? I'll tell you. Forget what other people think. Go at it alone. Give in to peer pressure. Try to make other people happy. Play with temptation. Push that envelope. React in the heat of the moment. Best of all, rationalize your decision and justify yourself before you even take the first step in the wrong direction. If we do these things, we're practically guaranteed to do something we'll regret. Well, we've got one life to live. Obviously, we all want to be happy and fulfilled and successful. And the best way to do that is to make good choices that honor God, support one another, and work for a better world. The Bible gives us plenty of advice for doing exactly that. And it shouldn't come as any great surprise because our Creator loves us and wants us to flourish in the beautiful world that He created. Everything we see in Scripture is given for our benefit. Well, as always, guys, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me. I'll see you next time.